So in Quantum Break, in a, in a break from Remedy tradition, you are not playing someone named Mr. Q Break. You are playing <laughs> as a, a Jack Joyce. Indeed. And he has yes. the ability to control time. Yes. What do you think is the appeal, just as, as a regular person, what is the appeal of, of controlling time? Why do we feel that's fun? Why do we want to do that? I think that it goes back to just, you know, one of those really basic fundamental childhood fantasies even that, that you just, you know, everybody has those uh, uh, ideas about what, what would I do if I could bend time and, and certainly we are, we are catering to that fantasy, uh, kind of a power fantasy in, in, in some ways, you know, this is also a superhero story and, right. and uh, you know, an origin of a superhero in a, in a way in, in, in Jack that, mm -hmm. that uh, he gains his powers in the very beginning and, and obviously as a player you are learning to master those powers while Jack as a character is, you know, just trying to understand and grasp what's happening uh, to him and, and what's happening around him. So we are kind of taking those steps and, and the character and the player experience goes hand in hand mm -hmm. forward. So one of the classic themes of a time travel story is that you are often trying to change time or undo yes. a mistake or yes. prevent something from happening. Yes. Is that something central to Quantum Break? It is part of the uh, uh, thing and, and, and it's, it's certainly kind of uh, the themes that, that we have in there is just the you know, fundamental struggle between uh, what, what is the destiny and, and what's fated to happen versus free will and I can change things and I can affect things and that's very much kind of part, part of the conflict that, that we have in the game. So some of that conflict uh, manifests as, as, as violent conflict in the video game itself while you're playing it and you're able to, to create these almost time bubbles, fire some bullets into them and sort of do a two-step plan while you're shooting yeah. and fighting. Um, what do you think are some of the important aspects to, to keep alive in, in cover-based shooting? when you're adding these abilities and not sort of drowning the player in all these options. Yeah, right. Uh, the, the time powers are very much in the core of the experience. And, and, and you know, that, that is the, the fun part and, and, and the power we are giving to the player. And, and, and sure, I mean, we, we have covers in there and we have shooting in there, but the cool, unique part is obviously uh, uh, the time. Uh, and and it, it gives uh, certain things to you. Uh, first of all, when you are using your time powers, uh, you know, for a person who doesn't have time powers, you well, just... I, I do have time powers. <laughs> of course, of know. course, yeah. Check this so. out. <laughs> now we'll edit back to where we were. Where we were. <laughs> so, when you use your time powers, the enemies lose track of him. But also, there, there are other aspects to it. It's, it's not just, you know, time stopping. Uh, it's, it's more like in the, in, the, in the heart of the experience is the idea of time breaking. The, another major component of Quantum Break, and, and one of its more ambitious aspects, I would say, is, is the structure of the story. Yeah. Now, you've played with literary uh, storytelling with Alan Wake in episodic format. Uh, some of that is transferring over to Quantum Break, but you are also uh, introducing a television component. I believe you're shooting alternate scenes that react to decisions made in the game. Yeah, that is true. I mean, we we are certainly exploring uh, how to kind of uh, have those components and, and how to do a TV series in a way and still, you know, make this whole experience dynamic and interactive. The, the optimal experience is to play through an act of the game. Uh, it culminates in, in what we call a junction scene. Uh, of and, and in that scene, you're actually playing the main villain of the game, the bad guy, Paul Serene, who has the most powerful time power of all, which is this junction power. He sees, he can see visions, glimpses of different potential future, uh, futures, and, and you will be playing him uh, in these moments. You, you can explore these different visions, and, and then you make a choice, and that future comes to be in your want to break experience. Then we go to an episode of the show and you immediately start to see, mm -hmm. you know, consequences based on your choice. So in a way you're almost seeing an alternate take and an alternate reality in these live action Yes, scenes. and, and, and there, there is the idea, we, we are dealing with time travel and, and, and we are dealing with, with uh, uh, kind of 
those themes. So, so it's it's almost like on, on the meta level, uh, you know, you are crafting your alternate timeline, your you know personal quantum break universe, uh, and your friend's version is slightly different. So tell me about these alternate scenes uh, in Quantum Break. Well, you're essentially you know, at these junction points and then you pick uh, the progression of the reality that you're about to see in the next live action sequence. It's like you're peering into an alternate take and an alternate universe, your alternate universe. That's really cool and interesting. I agree.